Okay, so we are talking about powerful metaphorical truths. Truths in the Bible, capital T truths, that have resonance far beyond the printed page. Let's take one example. The tongue holds the power of life and death. That's in the Bible? Yeah, that's in the Bible. Oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. That's because you're not reading your Bible. And if you're an atheist, you're only reading one part of the Bible. Exodus 21 or 23 or whatever it is, where, where God get down slavery. That's it. That's the only part you seem to read. Well, there are other parts of the Bible. Lo and behold, there are other sections, whole other teachings in the Bible than just that. So, the tongue holds the power in life of life and death. And as I have pointed out in the past many, many, many times, if there is a really important concept in the Bible, it does not appear just once. It appears hundreds of times. It's reinforced um, in a bunch of different ways in a bunch of different chapters. As is that phrase. The tongue holds the power of life and death. There's the famous psalm. So let the words of our song and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. Oh, for I... That's based on... I forget what the psalm is off the top of my head. That song, that song, um, yeah, it's from uh, The Heart of the Come, Jimmy Cliff. Great album. Great, 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 fantastic reggae album. It's been done a few times, covered by different groups, but I'm pretty sure that's the first place it appears. Um, or at least one of the first places it appears. That's the first place I ever heard the song. But the concept, the tongue holding the power of life and death, it's reiterated in that song, it's reiterated time and time again in the Bible. Let nothing come out of your mouth except for it be, it be for the edification of others. And it is a powerful truth. Like all the powerful truths in the Bible, the Bible is expecting you, the reader, you, the practicing religitard, to eternalize the truth of the Bible and try and walk it out. That's what the Bible means when it says, let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. I've heard that misinterpreted a couple of times by atheists. Ears to hear doesn't mean it's being written in secret code. It means it's being written for somebody who is listening the right way. And what is the right way? That phrase itself, by the way, is reiterated time and time again in the Bible. As I've said, if something is really spiritually important, it's not said once. It's said 50 to 100 to a thousand, to, well, maybe not a thousand, 50 to 100 times. Like, let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what does that mean in context? What that means, someone who with ears to hear is listening to practice, listening to internalize the truth and live it out in their life. Let it, um, let it go sift into their heart and become part of their approach to life. It's not being written just to say it. Let nothing come out of your mouth except it be for the edification of others. That is being said to somebody for you to practice that. And if you don't think that that's good advice, try it out in your marriage. Promise you. Fantastic advice. Fantastic advice. Keep your tongue from evil. It's said time and time again in the Bible. It's fantastic advice and it's important truth. It's important truth about living a successful life. And I don't know if you have ever seen, for example, someone who has been the victim of emotional abuse. I don't know if you've known anybody who's grown up emotionally abused. I have. I've known them well. My mother-in-law, for example. Um, horribly, horribly, horribly abused emotionally when she was young. The stories will tear your heart out hearing them. And what happens? The... The words that were spoken to her, and if you have a child now, you know this. The words that you speak to your child, the tongue holds the power of life and death. The things that you say to a growing child, they internalize. They don't just hear. You say, you lazy, you good for nothing, you dumb MF, you lazy, good for nothing. They internalize the attitude that you are speaking into them. You are speaking into them as they are growing up. And I, I promise you, I knew this woman well. 
70 years old, had never gotten over what was said to her when she was young, never gotten over the words. She could not shake it her entire life. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Now, most good parents do this automatically because they love their child. Again, another truth from the Bible. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you love your child, you tend to say encouraging, warm, loving, caring things. And this is actually part of the growth process. It's how they get their mirror. It's how they form their identity. And when, when somebody is speaking death into a child, when someone is speaking negative into a child, it distorts their entire relationship to reality. And it distorts it from to the day they die. That woman never shook her self-hatred. Never. You couldn't get it out of her. It was so deeply rooted in her. Why? Because it had been told to her time and time again when she was young. Reiterated. Sewn into her, as they say. So that's just one powerful truth from the Bible. A metaphorical truth. That is spiritually true. Now, as I pointed out in the past, my fellow apologists like to deal with other types of truth. Other types of truths are not necessarily what the Bible is aiming for. It is aiming for spiritual truth. Far more important to the Christian and far more important when you are grappling with the spiritual book. The tongue holding the power of life and death is a spiritual truth. If you walk out, internalize, and correctly practice spiritual truths, it helps you in life. It's supposed to edify and strengthen you so that you can live a more successful life. That's the whole point of teaching people spiritual truths. So that's all for now on that subject. Tongue holds the power of life and death. Powerful metaphorical truth in the Bible. Amen.